You are listening to the Lawyer Stories Podcast with host Benny Gold. Lawyer Stories was founded in July 2017 and is an expanding global network of lawyers and law students sharing their personal journeys to the noble profession of the practice of law. Join us on this podcast as we dig deeper into these stories and hear from lawyers and law students from around the world in all areas of the legal profession. Here at Lawyer Stories, we believe that every lawyer has a story. What's yours? Welcome to the Lawyer Stories podcast with Benny Gold. Uh, Today we welcome in Natalia Sashonia, Esquire, and LLM, uh, Managing Partner at Sashonia PLLC, practicing in real estate, estate planning, and asset protection in New York City. How are you today? I'm excellent, Ben. Thank you so much for having me here. And um, I, first of all, I would like to congratulate you on your second child. Oh, thank and, you very much. Uh, second, I, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. I think it's, uh, um, it's great for our legal community just to be able to share our stories and to be able to inspire other attorneys from all over the world. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you so much. Job. Thank you. I really, you know, I really appreciate it. we work very hard to build this community. So thank you for those kind words. And I must say, you do have like such a uh, amazing story that I'm, I'm really uh, excited to have you on and sort of uh, develop it a little bit more. We did feature you this past uh, almost the beginning of summer, but it was June 11th. Um, and you do you have an incredible story, like I said. So this is really a treat to be able to kind of unpack some of it, uh, truly like the American dream. Um, so like, let's jump right in, if you don't mind. Like you started, you had like a heading on your story, right? It was uh, from being a waitress to managing partner, right? So you were um, managing partner at a law firm. So like, first of all, like just tell us, give us a little background, like where you were born and raised. Uh, I was born in Siberia, uh, in Russia. Wow. And uh, I was raised there as well. I lived there till I was 21 years old. And um, then I moved to US uh, to study. Okay, so that, that's, that's awesome, first of all. Like, it's not every day. You know, you hear about Siberia as like one of these things. And like, now I'm actually like talking to somebody from Siberia. That's super cool. So tell me, like you, you said in your story, you were an exchange student at like 18 years old. You went to the USA. Um, so like, and then you knew you wanted to be an attorney when you went over there. So I want to like go into that a little bit. So where were you an exchange student from, from Russia? And then where in, in the USA did you go? And like, what program was it? Like, what was that experience like? Uh, so it was a student's exchange program, um, that, uh, I went on and my first place in US that I visited was in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, It was actually, so it was just exchange program during the summer where students had an opportunity to work in U.S. and uh, practice English. So I worked as a waitress there in uh, Mammoth Cave Hotel in the Mammoth Cave National Park. Um, And when I came, I could understand probably like 20% of English. So, uh, and you know, like the Southern accent is also different (laughs) from the rest of US. Were you like in a suburb in Kentucky or like, were you in like- like It was complete like suburban place. Like there was a little civilization there, just like a cave uh, and the hotel. So, So when you were there, were you like, all right, like this is nice, but I wanna go see like Boston. I wanna go to LA, I wanna check out New York. Like, you know, I wanna go to Miami. Like, did you sort, how long were you there? I was there for three months, but okay. uh, then, you know, after three months of my work assignment, I had a chance to travel a little bit. And I think uh, my first places that I visited while there, I think it was Washington, D.C., the okay. first city that I visited. But I mean, uh, I, I saw New York when I when I landed, when I, I landed um I landed in New York before going to Kentucky and uh, I had the chance to see Times Square and the five state building. I went on the tour with my friends to see the observation. Okay. Um, And then I took a Greyhound. It was like a 24 hour ride. Um, Wow. 
I was terrified because I couldn't understand English that well. Right. And um, the system in Russia is different when you buy a ticket on the bus. Yep. Um, you take one bus and you get to your final destination. Where in US, you know, when you buy a ticket, when I bought a ticket from New York to Kentucky, I had to change bus. Oh, yeah. And for me, like, you know, like not understanding language. Oh, I didn't yeah. sleep for this 24 no, hours. Oh, I know, I bet, I, I bet, yeah. I was asking like five times. I was asking my driver five times. No, I mean, I'm like fully American. I, I should get off thing. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, okay, like, is this is this where I get, I, I totally get that, 100%. So how long were you in New York that time when you first landed there? Just for like 24 hours. 24 hours. So, so you said you had like this time where you were like, I want to be a lawyer. And that was at, was that during that exchange program? I actually, so when I went on exchange program, I was already studying law in Russia. Okay. So like, uh, I guess when I decided to become a lawyer, it was like way back in childhood. Like I was about maybe like eight years old. So okay. It, oh, it, okay. it was like from early childhood. But when I went uh, on my first um, exchange program to US, this is a time where I decided I want to be in a US attorney. And um, how it happened is I had a friend that I met at the um, Mammoth Cave National Park, okay. uh, whose, whose brother was an attorney. And um, he was like one of the youngest partners at the law firm. So he made an introduction. And uh, so we, um, we had like a road trip to Pennsylvania. That law firm was in Pennsylvania. Okay. And I was invited to the law firm and I was invited to this special private lunch with the partners of the law firm. Oh, nice. It was, it was truly special. Like, yeah. um, it was a mind opening. Uh, I enjoyed that experience and I decided, like, this is what I want. I want to become a U.S. attorney. Wow. Okay. So is it much more difficult in Russia? Like, it seems like you were 18 and starting to become a lawyer already or 17. Yes, so in Russia, you don't do bachelor before you go to law school. You go to law school right away after high school. Wow. So pretty much like when you are um, in your 10th or 11th grade, you need to decide what you want to do. Like you yeah. need to know which field to go to. Like the same for doctors, the same for like other professions. Like you start, you start studying right away without four years. That's amazing. So like you don't even have to go to college there. You're just like they're just like here's law school. Right? So they call it they call it kind of it's kind of college. Okay. Like it's it's a longer degree. When I was I think now they are practicing, they're trying to implement similar system. They have yeah. uh, four years of bachelor and then you get your master's degree. But at the time when I was studying, there was no idea as bachelor. I was just studying for five years and uh, I got my law degree. Okay. Wow. Okay. So did you happen to meet a mentor during that time when you were there? Did you stay in touch with any of those people in at the law office in Philadelphia uh, or was it, or Pennsylvania rather? Sorry. Did you, is that where you met a mentor or no? Uh, no, no, actually, unfortunately I didn't have a mentor. So okay. that uh, like looking back, um, it made my journey more difficult because right. it's nice. No, it is. It's, it's nice definitely, you know, it's very difficult. I think whether or not you're from, you know, another country, if you don't have a mentor, you know, and you need somebody to teach you, it's difficult if you don't have one. So I, I think that that's, you know, that is true. So you, when did you work at the UN? Was that when you decided to move here? Or like, when did you actually make the transition over to the U.S.? So um, I was coming for this exchange program three years straight. So three summers in a row, I would go and work in U.S. during the summertime, uh, practice my English, and then I would go back uh, for the semester to, to, to continue studying my law in Russia. Okay. So after I was done with my law program in Russia and I received my final diploma, this is a time when I decided to make that move and uh, move to U.S. to study law here. Okay. All right. Got you. So like what advice do you have for someone who uh, from another country who like dreams of coming here and like making it in the USA, whether it be as a lawyer or in another 
industry? So uh, number one um, is not to give up and um, just keep in mind that everything is possible if you if you put uh, hundred percent of your energy there. So of course, uh, I think it's beneficial to find the mentor to get guidance because um, I think I wasted a lot of time. Really? I value my experience, but um, if you have a mentor, you can uh, achieve your goals quicker. Okay, yeah. That so uh, that's number one. And then um, just be brave, you know, not hesitate to experience new things. Um, even if you don't know the language, uh, US welcome um, people from all over the world. So nothing yep. to be scared here. And um, I think US is also a country of opportunities. Everyone can find their place here. Uh, we know that you know, US uh, is built on immigrants and uh, there are a lot of interesting stories of people relocating totally. from different countries. And- uh, totally. So, and you even won, like in, you went to law school here in, in New York, right? Or not, I shouldn't say here, I'm in Massachusetts, but like in, uh, in New York, right? You ended up going to uh, to law school. I, I went to law school actually in uh, Philadelphia, okay. uh, Pennsylvania, okay. and uh, it was um, uh, Temple University Business oh, wow. School of Law. Wow, okay. So, uh, I don't know why I thought uh, of New York, maybe because that's where you are, right? So. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, I uh, one of the reasons why I went there is um, I I was you know supporting myself, so um, I was looking for like more economical um, education. That yeah. that was one of the reasons I went to film. Oh yeah, oh definitely. Um, and, and it you, was a great program. Right. Yeah, it's a great school. So and you won an award there, right? Like you won a um, international law award. Is that true? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Well, congratulations. That's terrific. Thank you. Look at you. Like you're coming over from another country. I mean, by the way, we're going to get into like the type of law you're you're practicing. Um, you know, you learn a new language. You said you were like 20 percent proficient uh, earlier in the episode. And now, you you know, you've come a long way. You've learned a new language. And now you're you're practicing like one of the most I think it's pretty difficult, like sort of complex type of law. So um, it's pretty uh, it's pretty incredible. Um, so. You passed, so you passed the New York bar. What um, what was your first job after passing the bar? So um, my first job, since I didn't go to New York school, New York um, law school, it was a challenge to get the first job. Right. Um, right. I can share that experience. Sure. Uh, I remember that um, when I graduated from the law school, I actually sent about 100 letters to different yeah. law firms in New York. And I received, I think, about 23 responses back saying okay. that, unfortunately, uh, they cannot offer me a job. And um, I ended up uh, finding a position at my um, friend's contacts firm through the networking and relationship and um, but it wasn't an attorney position I studied as a part-time assistant at that okay. time and um, the attorney who was mentoring me happened to leave the firm like two weeks after I started so uh, I got promoted to a like junior okay. associate and you know I, I proved myself with work and like yeah. slowly I became a full-time and you know with the experience I became a senior associate so I had a good base it was a boutique small boutique law firm where um, I had an opportunity to to learn everything about real estate and you know how it's how would you, like how would you define a boutique a boutique law firm Boutique, boutique law firm is a firm um, that more like tailored to serve clients' interest. Um, okay. You work directly with the attorney. So uh, as a client, for example, I think the benefit for the clients is they work directly with attorneys. Um, okay. They are not just like shifted uh, to paralegals. 
Right. And exactly. um, you get more like um, personalized service in a boutique law firm, you know, okay. since it's smaller, um, it's, uh, it's less load of cases. So clients are better taken care. They get response like right away from the attorneys. There is a personal touch, uh, instant responses to the emails. Like uh, I think the biggest complaint I hear from, from clients uh, working with other um, attorneys, law firms is that it's very hard to reach attorneys. You know, it's very hard to get updates and clients really value that boutique sure. approach. Sure. Okay. Thanks for clearing that up for me. Like I always see boutique and, you know, that's, uh, I, you know, I thought I knew, but I wanted to just uh, let everybody else know too. Um, so you're in real estate, you, you do a, a few different things, um, but like, what advice would you give somebody who wants to be say a real estate attorney? Okay, so um, number one, if you are just out of the law school, I would suggest to work for the for some other law firm at least for three years to get a hand-on experience and build up confidence. Um, I'm a believer that you need to get experience before you start on your own because that confidence is important. I think it just that doesn't worth to learn. Um, uh, on mistakes um, or um, put clients in danger by experimenting on them. I think uh, you get your solid experience uh, with the mentorship at the law firm, and then you can move on and start on your own. But real estate is a very interesting field. Yeah, well, especially in New York. Here in New York, so you must see some uh, some amazing, uh, inter interesting and you know, complex, intricate transactions. Um, so, you know, we know you've had this story where you came from another country, no real mentor, didn't know anybody, did your own thing, like, you know, became an attorney. Incredible um, what you've done. So give us some advice uh, for someone to stay positive when things aren't always going their way. Like, how would you, what would you tell somebody who you know, sort of down and out about their career. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> um, I would uh, advise, actually, what usually helps me when I'm down is um, keep on reading books on self-development. It could be either physical books or audio books. Uh, nowadays, you can find a book on any topic. So, um, like if you are depressed, find a book, how to get out of depression or like <laughs> okay. you, or Google, you know, in YouTube, you can find a lot of helpful videos. Um, you just yep. need to be proactive. You, you need proactive. to stay positive. Okay. And um, I think um, resilience is actually a very important skill for the attorney. Um, I think yes. it's not just for your personal success, but also for um, to be a good legal counsel to your client. You need to stay positive because uh, when you go into negativity, your mind blocks and you're not able to find a good solution. But when you keep your mind open and when you stay positive, you may you may just come up with that amazing solution that you wouldn't even you know think about yeah so uh, i think staying positive uh reading or listening uh, books um uh, is the best advice but again like um i would say maybe uh the bigger advice that i would give uh for someone who just start legal career um don't just concentrate on your career um try to work on other areas of your life work on self-development again like read books spend time with your family spend time quality time with your friends plan fun trips um yeah, you true. need to balance yeah invest in your health invest in healthy eating you need to balance to stay sane because i know a lot of attorneys who get worn out they get overwhelmed especially working for the big law firms sometimes they have to sleep in their office for like three days Ooh, straight that's crazy 
it's it's brutal so you know to like you you need to find that perfect balance where you take care of yourself you take care of your body you you spend time with your friends with the family you allocate time for everything and i'm a true believer that if you take care of yourself well you'll have enough energy to serve your clients as a as their legal counsel very good. I like it. Thank you very much. Um, so what was it like? Like what made you decide to start your own firm? So show you PLLC. Tell us. Oh, that's, that's a good question. Thank you very um, much. <laughs> so I already had my uh, experience, you yep. know, um, like thousands of hours, uh, sleepless nights, and uh, I had connections. So I took this chance. It was scary first to start on your own, but I took the chance and I, I haven't, you know, regretted for a second. Um, How long have you been in business? Um, I've been in the real estate business since 2012, but I started wow. my own law firm first in 2016. Very good. So tell us what it's all about. Like, what are you doing over there in New York? In New York, so um, I practice uh, real estate law. I'm a real estate attorney, and um, what we do is uh, we uh, help, we we take part uh, in our clients' uh, biggest decision of their life, and we help them right. to buy their uh, dream home. That's great. Or to sell their home and to buy, you know, uh, and to upgrade in their life by bigger home. Uh, yeah. We also help <laughs> investors to build their wealth by investing. Uh, we help investors wow. by uh, deferring their taxes, uh, doing 1031 exchange and build their legacy for the generations to come. And we also secure our clients well, because, you know, having this uh, American dream, buying your first home, then investing in properties is a big step, but it's also important to secure this whole structure. Right. So it doesn't go to waste uh, when the person is gone. So. And you've learned all that uh, through practice and through the people that you've worked for prior, correct? Correct. That's correct. amazing. That's amazing. Um, so I love your website. It's all, it looks great. I hope everybody goes to check it out. Um, and it mentions meticulous, um, meticulous planning for real estate closings. And you have a rep, uh, excuse me, a reputation for producing stress-free closings for, for clients. Tell us about the stress-free, stress-free closings. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure why all the clients write uh, in their reviews that it's a stress-free experience. So I just pulled that line uh, okay. from it's, you know, it, like I can't tell about myself, but I, I think like I pulled that phrase from my clients reviews. Most of them are writing about stress-free experience. Well, no, look, I can look, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that one for you. Okay. I think it, um, you know, it says you say you're meticulous in your preparation. So I think you prepare probably a lot, right? Like you prepare, when you prepare a lot and you're prepared and prepared and you show up to the, the day of the closing, stress-free, right? Everything that, just goes. Through. It's stress-free. Everything okay. Ready. I'll answer that one for you, Natalia. How's Thank that? you. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. You made my job easier. Yeah, you're welcome. So tell me, how is it, like, I think coming full circle, like with your story, you know, I love stories. I love sharing stories. That's what we do with lawyer stories. Um, and I think like with yours, like coming full circle, like how has being from like another country, Russia, um, like how, has it helped your law practice? Like how has it helped you? Um, I believe uh, my experience uh, in total really helped my law practice, like be it uh, working as a waitress, uh, be it yes. coming from a different country or be it, um, you know, doing my internship at United Nations. It's all helped, like, for example, um, being a waitress taught me how to work in a fast paced right. environment. And, you know, New York real estate is super fast paced environment. Yep. 
you get your deal sheet with information you need to draft your contract get it out right away again you get some comments you need to respond right away clients want your update right away and like when you have uh, multiple deals floating in the air at the same time like you need to run to the closing so it's it's definitely fast paced and um looking at my uh united nations um internship at uh, four six months uh, that I've done early on when I was in US is um, exposure to the um, international um, to other international students and uh, that skill uh, working and you know um, collaborating with people from multiple countries also helped me um, to get um, better understanding of my clients. Uh, who are purchasing real estate in New York, but they are here from all over the world. For example, our firm uh, represented clients from Russia, Switzerland, uh, Japan, yep. France, Italy, Turkey, China, That's South amazing. Korea, Singapore, uh, Bulgaria, Ukraine, and other countries. Wow. So um, being a foreigner, I think I have an advantage. Sure. Of understanding these people relating uh, yep. to them like they also have their worries purchasing you know making this big purchase in a new country but being a foreigner i think i get a better understanding of their personalities their psychology and we connect well wow yeah that no that's incredible especially in new york it's so diversity it's so diverse there um that's right and so. especially like for for my russian clients um, oh yeah yeah. In New York. For them, our firm is definitely um, actually one of my associates is from Italy. So for Italian clientele and for Russian clientele, our firm is a big asset because we speak their native language. So it's definitely helpful. Yeah, that's amazing. Language. That's amazing. Um, so like another another part of like your website that I, I liked because I like these phrases. Um, so like, what does displaying, so you do, you do uh, like elder law or estate planning as well? Um, yes. Yeah, yes. So, so you describe your practice sort of like you display kindness, patience and attentiveness. Um, so like, what is that? Like, why is that important for you to, to be that way in estate planning? I love that, but tell me a little, tell us a little bit about that. So, you know, estate planning, um... I edit estate planning later on. Um, I've been doing yes. a little of estate planning since the beginning, but it was like uh, smaller, like more like wheels, uh, trusts, uh, smaller structures. Um, after I um, went through the tax program at uh, Fordham University, um, I went to Gabelli Business School uh, and I finished tax pro program, got my master's right. degree in taxation i um wow. it out like, like taxation like how do you i mean it, that's not like that difficult i mean that's got to be so difficult to learn i mean it's, to learn that i mean it's hard. yeah like some of the passages you have to read like 10 times just to understand like what the legislator means there you know All right. All right. tax laws are really complicated so yeah after i graduated from that program i decided um to like do more complex um, structures for my clients. And there are some amazing things that you can do with tax. So when it comes to estate planning, you deal with elderly people, you know, you deal with um, wealthy people that want to secure your assets. So it's important to be kind and patient, be a good listener. Uh, so, um, you know, clients can open up uh, because like everyone has their unique situation in the family. Yep. And, um, you know, everyone has their own story. Everyone has their own agenda. So I think kindness and patience is very important there. Totally. I love that. Um, so what I also found interesting is that uh, it's something that's very big and kind of like a new frontier like, tell us about estate planning with digital assets and cryptocurrency. Like, how much have you actually gotten into that? I mean, it's sort of brand new. Maybe it's not brand new, but it seems pretty new. 
So we just recently started, and again, um, it happened after I did the program. I did a special part. Uh, I took a class on cryptocurrency, and uh, this is, you know, how I got interested in this topic. So, you know, cryptocurrency is getting hot. Uh, more and more people invest um, yeah. in crypto assets. So it's like any other assets that need protection. So this is where uh, our team at Sishodia PLLC come uh, to help clients, you know, plan and secure their assets so they don't just get wasted when they're gone. Yeah, wow, okay. That, yeah, it's definitely a difficult topic. And I think it's something that everybody's gonna need to learn eventually, um, like what's going on with uh, crypto and then there's NFTs and all that, that sort of whole thing. Um, so like, how did you end up adding, I think you just added the state planning, like what made you want to do that? And how did you do that? So, um, I was working, um, with my, um, mainly in the real estate first when I started and, uh, I helped thousands of clients, um, through my career. So, uh, I, I was getting a lot of questions from my clients, um, like, do you do wheels? Because, you know, when you buy real estate, you automatically develop a need for estate planning. Because, you know, you, again, this, we are going back to American dream. When your American dream came true, you, you bought your house, you need to secure it. So um, the way I see it, estate planning goes together with the real estate, goes very well together with the real estate. It's like, where we talk about real estate, uh, automatically there is a question about estate planning. So yeah. that's how the whole idea of aiding estate planning. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. You're, you're like, you're such like a mover, like you're so on top of it. Like you're, I mean, you're just like doing whatever you can to better yourself and to be the best attorney you can be um, every day. And I think that that's, uh, you know, that's incredible. I think anybody would want to hire you who has, a, has, you know, deals with this because they know you're going to get the job done because you're, you know, you're, you're on top of it. Um, so. And also, you know, it, it brings you into a completely different game as an attorney when you have not just like, uh, not just the real estate knowledge, but when you have a knowledge of estate planning and tax knowledge. So when you start working with a client, you already plan ahead for this client. So clients really like it that they don't have to consult like three different attorneys. They can just come to our right. firm and right. they can get a full boutique service. A full boutique service. Full, there you go. Full boutique so service. Like we want to use Natalia for everything. Like Correct. We want, to use, we want her for everything. I don't You'll blame be surprised. Okay. You'll be surprised, but sometimes I get uh, my clients ask me for different type of recommendations of like esthetician, you know, uh, good, good, oh, restaurant, really? good restaurants. Um, Maybe that's they see the word boutique and they ask you like for a barber or something, you know. It's yeah, really yeah, yeah. And I know a lot of people because you know over esthetician, over really. Jeez. I represented business owners, so I have a lot of connections, and right. I love connecting people. I think. Oh it's yeah. Fun that's that's them. like that's that is like what makes me go connecting people. And in fact, for why you mentioned connecting people, I just want to tell you if you ever see anybody on lawyer stories or elsewhere that you want like a warm introduction to, like you don't want to out of the blue send them a message, like I am happy to do that for you. Like oh, we, have, wow. we have a lot of like New York people. A lot of South Florida people, California, LA. Um, if you see somebody there that you just sort of want to network with, this is what we're aiming towards. And I will say this on the show, like we're going towards that sort of thing, like connecting everybody. But I, would, I am happy to do that for you, Natalia. Like right now, I would really love to uh, talk and get an introduction to attorneys from Del Delaware and Texas um, who yeah. are in a real estate. It's really specific. I could see if I have that out there, but <laughs> we, we, could find, we could figure it out for you. I'll work with you to like figure that out because we're trying to. I think like Delaware is the place where people have their businesses, right? So like they don't have to pay okay. tax or something. Like everything's like lower percentage. I don't it's know. Very favorable for favorable. Thank you. That's a good way to put it. Yes. Yeah. A couple more questions for you. So like, what's most fulfilling right now about your job? Tell us about your practice. 
So um, I think the most fulfilling about the practice first is um, that um, I'm able to change, um, to make a big impact on the client's life. Okay. Because we are guiding them through the real estate process. And this is one of the biggest transactions in their life. And especially when we work with the first time home buyers, they are very anxious, they are scared, they, they go into unknown. And it's really rewarding being able to guide them through, uh, manage their stress level, you know, assure that yeah. their transaction action go stress-free yeah, stress so that's it being able to help them actually to get their dream home in u.s okay another thing is uh i think that is very rewarding is uh, working with amazing people okay. um clients from all over the world i already uh, mentioned before we now i read did you do you have like celebrity clients too like are you going to tell me about some of those after or like yeah, yeah. Right I don't want to stay private, but I okay. had the honor to work with celebrity clients, with CEOs of big companies, some of the largest uh, nations, lenders, again, business owners, partners of law firms. It's, it's just amazing. We come across like artists, you know, interesting people. It's just everyone has their own story. and it's, Everybody has a story. It's amazing. Yeah, it's like lawyer stories. You know, every lawyer has a story. Every client in real estate has a story too. Yeah. So it's just interesting to be a part of that stage in their life and see yeah. how some of them uh, build their wealth, like being able to help clients to build their wealth from their first purchase and like through years, like the investment properties and, you know, being able to secure yeah. the well, wealth. It's interesting because you say, yeah, you say on your website, like everybody at some time, they, they rent, they buy, they sell, they own. You say this on your website. And I think it's, it's like, I know it's like kind of like a, yeah, I mean, everybody knows it, but you don't think of it like that, you know? So, so like, because that's like everybody, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's a really good point. That's right. Yeah. It's like, we touch uh, people's life on every stage. Like if, somebody doesn't have enough money to buy you know the rent we can still help with the lease agreement and stuff yeah. and amazing part is that uh, not too many people know there are a lot of uh, government programs that help low-income families to purchase their homes and yeah, that's um, great. for example you, you, in new york you know what i do right my full-time job right like i'm a yeah. i'm an exec yeah so i you know i moonlight as a podcast host but, um, you know, my, that's, that's great. So I love to hear it is what I'm saying. I think that's so important that, that you do that. Yes. So uh, it's also like for the low income families, uh, there are a lot of opportunities uh, if the income, if the family income is um, below 76,000 combined, um, they have an opportunity to get a government grant uh, up to hundred thousand dollars. Wow. To their first home and they can even get an apartment in a nice neighborhood you know uh, where they, their kids can go to top schools so um it's uh, it's an educational process also we educate community we help uh, yeah we represent celebrities but we also you know help uh, regular people <laughs> so yeah. our client is very diverse we are we are happy we are open to help anybody who comes our so way important. what you're doing is so important um so is there anything else that we left out is there any other advice that you want to give to the lawyer stories community um we you know we'll take any of the advice we can get from you and if not we can talk about advice some other time but I think uh, I would just like repeat myself, just stay positive. Um, everything is possible. Everything is in our hands. And um, I would say, uh, try to balance. Like if you just start as an attorney, try to balance. Don't just go crazy and be career focused. And I think with the pandemic, uh, more people already understand that it's important to take care of your health. It's important to take care of your body, exercise, eat healthy, and um, watch your uh, mental health, you know, uh, like read good books, uh, listen audio books, meditate. And, you know, you'll, you'll be a happy human being. <laughs> That's good. That's good advice. And we appreciate that. 
Um, I hope we covered most things tonight. I don't know if there's anything I left out, um, but you know, like I said, it's always a pleasure for me to be able to connect people uh, inside our community, global community, but we're all connecting on a certain level with our stories. So, you, you know, let me know if there's anybody out there that you'd like to, you'd like to meet. And if I think of somebody else, send them your way as well. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much, Benny. I, I'm really grateful that we met and uh, yeah. I'm grateful. I think it's amazing what you're doing. Keep Thank on you. doing it. It's, it's, it's amazing idea Thank to you. build a legal community and to share everyone's story. It's just so interesting to follow you. Thank you so much and stay there for a moment and everybody else. I uh, hope you enjoyed our podcast with uh, Natalia Sashodia. Amazing story. Go check it out. Originally posted June 11, 2021. Wherever you are in the world today, enjoy yourselves. Cheers. <laughs>